thank you so much for joining us on Hello Neighbor today. How are you doing? Doing very good. Thank you for uh, having me on. Oh, no problem. We're happy to have you. So what do you do in your job? What's your job title? I am the chief of emergency services for Woodland Hills EMS, which basically is that I make sure that the day-to-day -day operations, the trucks are taken care of, there's people out there to help and uh, take care of the, you know, the people who are sick and injured. Why did you become an EMT? It started a long time ago when I was about 17. Uh, I had some couple friends and their father actually ran this station here and I stopped by to hang out with them and it was it was fun going on a couple calls so I just started pursuing it. So what does your day like look like in your job? Uh, usually for me is I come in the morning, uh, I do a bunch of paperwork, I talk to the crews, make sure that everything's taken care of, the trucks are clean and ready to go, they're stocked, any needs that need to be met or things that need to be fixed, replaced or otherwise, you know, that they might need to help them do their jobs a little bit better. And on occasion, depending on what's going on, I might run out there in the field with them to help them out with different calls or even, you know, support the fire department or police whenever they need uh, some additional uh, manpower. What's a common call that you guys get a lot? Uh, we get a lot of medical calls. Um, that's our, pretty much our main one. Uh, we do have occasional uh, vehicle accidents being in the area near the parkway and, you know, uh, Route 30 and Business 22. But a lot of times there's, you know, some traffic accidents there as well. The most important part of our job, I would definitely say, would be to make sure that you uh, take care of the person to the best of your abilities, leave them better than you found them, you know, help make that difference in somebody's life. What's your favorite part of being an EMT? My favorite part is actually, yes, the whole helping of people. If uh, if it's even just if it's me sitting there next to them telling them, hey, everything's going to be all right, to, yes, actually, you know, making them feel better. What's the hardest part about being an EMT? Oh, uh, honestly, the hardest part has to be, you know, giving the bad news. Uh, occasionally, in our field, we have to deal with the bad news. Um, it's one of the things that you don't like you don't train for but i'd like to always make it feel that whenever you do deliver the bad news you're very compassionate and very caring with uh you know speaking with the people i have to do it with families i have to do it with uh you know officers and with other firefighters sometimes it all depends on the situation but it's never easy no it doesn't sound like it what kind of tools do you use to do your job Oh, well, as you can see, behind, that's behind me is one of our ambulances. That's probably one of our biggest tools. Inside the ambulance is the uh, stretcher that we use to help move uh, the sick and injured people around. And there is a lot of equipment in there. Uh, one of them being the heart monitor. That's another one of the big things that we use uh, on pretty much every call. It can take blood pressure, take your pulse rates, check your heart rhythms, and even provide shocks as necessary. And there's a lot, like I said, a lot of equipment in there. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of different situations you need to cover. Yeah, we uh, we are kind of like the MacGyvers of the world where, you know, usually when you're dispatched to a call and you get there, you have no idea what you're getting into. And sometimes you really have to think on your feet because it's never really straightforward of, hey, I'm just here, I pick you up, I take you to the hospital. Do wear a uniform. As you can see, I have our uniform shirt on. Um, it's basically helped to, you know, keep us cool in the summertime and warm in the wintertime. We do have some other special gear, depending on what it is. If it's a, a car accident, we wear sort of what the fire department wears, but it's not made for fire. It's made for crawling through cars so that you know you don't get cut or injured when you're doing that. We also have a lot of stuff that people are talking about now in the news, which is uh, PPE or personal protection equipment, which is sometimes a gown, a mask, a hair cover, you know, goggles and things like that to help not just keep us safe, but keep our patients safe as well. Sounds like safety is a big priority. Safety is number one for us. Uh, there's a lot of times where, you know, it, it might sound strange, but we always say it, that we come first because if something happens to me, I can't help you. What I like to tell kids is, you know, when you're out playing and stuff like that, make sure you're wearing your helmets on your bikes or skateboards or rollerblades, things like that. Uh, when you're out and about in the neighborhood, make sure, you know, you have a couple trusted friends and stuff with you. So that if something does happen, there's always, you know, that friend who can call 911, you know, and get help for you and things like that. And use the buddy system. Buddy system works well, well, not just in our field, but in life in general. Tell me about something you think we might not know about being an EMT. Uh, while we are here 24-7, we're not always busy 24-7. Um, I know even during this whole pandemic thing, a lot of people were uh, not calling 911 because they were worried about you know us being overrun but you know we were always still here and ready to go um, whenever I go home 
I'm still not really off duty. I have lights and sirens in my, my personal vehicle. I have equipment in my uh, vehicle that if something goes bad and you know my crew needs additional help or we're waiting for another truck to come in because there's two trucks in the whole borough for about 18,000 people. So wow. sometimes you just need to go, you need to help out, so you go. Do you have any advice for kids who would like to, who are maybe thinking about becoming an EMT? Uh, yeah, if it's, a, if it's a field you're looking to get into, um, there's always the fire departments that are around. There's, you know, us that is also in the area. We do take volunteers. Generally, you know, you have to be around 16 years old of age to start volunteering. But, it, you know, you can always come down, you can talk to us, tour the facilities and, you know, ask questions. And we can give you uh, sort of avenues to where to go for your education and to get your certifications. What was your favorite book as a kid? We always like to ask that since we're the library. <laughs> my favorite book is still the one I kind of, you know, read with my kids is The Good Night Moon. Oh, a classic. I think a lot of kids out there know that book. Yeah, I was, you know, whenever I was a kid, my mother read it to me and it was a lot of years in between. And whenever my first son was born 20 some odd years ago, it was wow. one of the things that somebody put in a baby basket. I forget who it was. And I just picked this book up and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And a lot of good memories came back. And we always ask, which do you prefer, chocolate or vanilla ice cream? Uh, when it comes to chocolate or vanilla ice cream, my answer is yes. It doesn't yes. matter. Ice cream is always a good thing. I agree. Ice cream is always a good thing. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Well, thank you for having me. And hi, all you kids, and have fun this summer.